Our homeland is as always split in many different warlord states, and we are one of them. We are located on the Shandong Peninsula, but the Germans have carved up our two biggest port cities. For some time there hasn't been any war because of the Qing Empire, but instability is starting to rise. Even in our country the position of power is being fought about. Our governor Zhang Zongshang, more known as the Dog Meat General, is dead after his attempt to storm the sacred Taishan failed. This astounding news comes with the proclamation from the new master of Taishan, Zhang Tainran. He now rules all of Shandong and its people. This event symbolizes something brighter in the store for China. Tianran quickly got to work to revive our industry as it has struggled under the rule of our last leader. But as we began our revival, a huge economic crash started in Germany. It hasn't affected us, but it has affected the Qing dynasty. And it all fell together after nearly a decade of Chinese unity. And now the instabilities of China are being shown. Peasants have begun revolting in our country. And the League of Eight Provinces are breaking apart. The left Kuimintang in the south and the Anqing clique have rebelled, and soon the eastern provinces of the eight provinces also broke free. The eight provinces have already been cut in two, so this is a great opportunity to gain the support of our people by mobilizing them against the common enemy. We only have four divisions, but the eight provinces have zero on our border. So we began marching south along the coast. Sadly, the Anqing clique managed to capture Shuzu before us, but we did manage to capture Yan Chen. Once we reached Rugao, the eight provinces had reinforced the city with five divisions. We won't be able to ever capture it. But the people want more victories. So we will begin to prepare an intervention into Anqing. But while we did, the eight provinces surrendered. In the peace deal, we managed to take Shuhai, Huyang, and Nantong. Sadly, it's too late to stop our justification on Anqing and their army is stronger than ours. So we will have to abandon parts of our newly gained territory. In the meantime, we managed to end the peasants' riots. The war started and we recruited some of the peasants to help us. We successfully captured one tile and begun an offensive on a second, but they held out and repelled our attack. At the same time we started reopening barren military factories to support our war. Our divisions are so weak we can't even push a single province, so we will have to wait until we have enough guns to upgrade them or until Anqing runs out of them. Sadly, they received Japanese and Feng Tiang volunteers and began attacking us. Slowly they gained ground, but out of nowhere our savior came. The left Kuimintang declared war on Anqing, helping us in our war. This meant the Anqing military had to relocate a part of their troops, leaving gaps in their front line. We utilized these gaps and after some weeks we had managed to encircle both the Japanese and the Feng Tiang volunteers. It will take time to kill them, but if we just let them starve it will be fine. Two months later we had done it. Two months! In the meantime, we began destroying the drug dealers that have for far too many generations poisoned all of Chinese citizens. With the pocket destroyed, we tried to encircle a second part of their army, but as we did, they counterattacked and managed to encircle one of our divisions. We will once again have to wait for better times to attack. In the meantime, we struck a deal with Krupp to begin extracting steel and we began building even more military factories. With our new guns produced by the factories, we have created our most powerful unit yet. So it's time for an offensive again. After some long fighting, we broke through and managed to encircle a cavalry division and capture Heifei. The front was now completely open and in the south the Kuimintang had defeated the Anqing army in a huge battle. The Anqing clique have lost and soon they surrendered. 
We split them with the Kuiming Tang and we are now the rulers of Nanjing. It will take time to integrate everything, but the sooner we begin, the better. Even though the left Kuiming Tang managed to destroy a big part of the Anqing military, their army is still weak. And rather we attack them now than later once they have built it up. We declared war and began marching into their country. They weren't ready at all for this attack and they have almost no divisions on our border. So with no one to stop us, we encircled two of their divisions and managed to capture the important city of Nanchang. The encirclement was so much easier to destroy than the one in Anqing. While we destroyed it, we began integrating Nanjing to gain full control over its factories. The Kuimingtang have with the help of Bairat volunteers managed to push us back. But what they don't expect is that we utilize this offensive to encircle them yet again. It took some time to break through, but soon we had encircled them. We captured and destroyed their divisions, and with 30,000 dead on their side, the front was completely open. So we used this opportunity to march in and capture all their cities. They had a garrison in Chai Men, but we encircled the city and soon we had entered it. We have defeated the Kuimingtang. We are now one of the three biggest Chinese nations. But we haven't cored all yet. Luckily we have a lot of political power stored that we can use to start the process of integration. We have won in the south, so it's time to improve the industry in the region. We developed Anqing, Yinling and completed the Yinan Nanjing Railway. But then worrying news arrived from Japan. They have announced their ambitions that will probably clash with ours. They have already forced the Fengtian government to cede northern Manchukuo to the Russian Far Eastern Republic. So we sent the letter to Korean nationalists, hopefully getting their help if worst comes to worst. And to destabilize the situation in China even more, the fifth Zili Fengtian war began. Maybe we can take this opportunity to attack the Xing Imperial Authority while they are distracted with the Fengtian government. But it will take a lot of time to justify our war. So in the meantime we will intervene in the Hunan clique. But supply is low on our border with them. So we will have to lure them in first and then strike back. We declared war on Hunan and the Hunan army has already fallen for our trap. Now we can only hope it will work. And it did. The Hunan army weren't ready to meet our strong army pushing them back. After only two weeks we had encircled most of it. And we easily destroyed their army of 15,000 men. Meanwhile the 5th Zili Fengtiang war escalated and Japan joined on the side of the Fengtiang government. They had already reached Beijing. It's too late to intervene now, and we will have to end Hunan anyways. So that's what we did. We captured Changsha and Changde, their two biggest cities. They surrendered and we immediately began integrating their states. Meanwhile, the 5th Zili Fengtiang War escalated even more. All Chinese warlords have unified temporarily in the United Chinese Front. Together they want to push the Japanese out of mainland Asia. But they are struggling. The Fengtiang army has managed to cross the Yellow River. It is our Chinese duty to help the United Front and join them in their war. But first we have to train a ton of garrisons to protect our coast if the Japanese try a naval invasion. We are now ready. Let's save China.
Qing are back in Beijing and we have encircled a huge part of the Fengtian government's army. Now we only have to destroy it and march to Shenyang. We began with crushing the encirclement. It went well in the north and we had soon destroyed them. But in Shangxi it went slower. The mountainous terrain boosted their defense. But then, as we were close to destroy them, something unexpected happened. The legation cities joined the Japanese. This means they have provided several landing sites for the Japanese army and they have already begun pushing into our country. We need to push them back and out into the sea before the Japanese manage to reinforce them way too much. The first port city we managed to capture was their smallest, Ningbu. After that we continued towards Shanghai. The Japanese had already reinforced the city but they weren't expecting a human wave. We attacked with massive numbers and managed to capture one fourth of the city. The strategy of human waves have worked for now so we will just continue throwing men at them. We captured the second fourth of the city but now they have learned to counter our attacks. The third tile took far longer to take over and we had to use even more of our men. But a few weeks later we had captured it and now only the center of Shanghai is left. And we didn't let them rest a single bit before we began attacking. This way we slowly killed off each and every one of their divisions. But right as we were about to capture the whole city, the Japanese naval invaded Nantong. Luckily for us, it was too late to save Shanghai and we finally captured the city. While we were on our way to capture Shanghai, we had turned a blind eye to the south of our country. The Japanese had managed to capture everything from Changde to Chaimen. We will have to deal with this quickly before it gets out of hand. But first we will destroy the Japanese naval invasion. We thought it would go quickly as we have a lot of experience fighting the Japanese. But sadly it still took a lot of time. At least we finally managed to liberate Nantong and Rugao. Now it's time to liberate the south too. The Japanese have the same problem as we had against Hunan, low supply. This will allow us to encircle the overstretched Japanese by liberating Gansu. So that's what we did. The weak Japanese divisions got overwhelmed and we captured the city. We have now encircled a huge part of their conquered lands. It wasn't hard to liberate the lands as we were familiar with them and the Japanese not. We now only have the southern coast left to liberate. The Japanese had a great defense with only one weakness. Luckily we have found it. They have low supply around the city of Fuzhou. We began attacking them and soon we had arrived to the city. But we didn't stop there. As the Japanese did not have any backup plan if we broke through, we could march all the way to Chaimen, capturing their only port left. After destroying the encircled Japanese and legation city divisions, we have liberated our whole nation. We can now finally do what we were supposed to do a long time ago. To capture the Fengtian capital, kicking them out of the war. The Qing military has managed to hold the Fengtiang army back. Luckily the Japanese were too distracted in the south of our country so they haven't sent any help to Fengtiang. Our strong army broke through and the Fengtiangs couldn't do anything to stop us. After only a few weeks we had arrived in their capital, Shenyang. We only had to continue our offensive a bit more before they realized it was over. They surrendered and we started a peace deal with them and the Qing government. In the peace deal we had the upper hand because we had both saved the Qing and capitulated the Fengtian government. So we got everything except the port city of Taijin. With the Fengtian defeated we now have a giant front against the Japanese and the far eastern republic of Transmur. We have arrived to the front but the supply issues are worse than ever. We have to push them back and capture supply hubs before reinforcements arrive. We began with capturing Vladivostok from the Russians and then we continued towards Korea. The 
Japanese army arrived around Seoul, but luckily for our supply, we captured the city first. From there, we slowly advanced towards Busan. On the way to the city, we encircled several Japanese divisions. We have now captured all of Korea. This means we only have to capitulate the Russians and we have kicked the co-prosperity sphere out of mainland Asia. But our spies told us that it wouldn't be necessary to kick the Russians out because the Japanese are already giving up hope. All we have to do is to hold on to the states that we have captured. However, to press them to surrender faster we will still attack the Russians. We have already liberated Harbin, their biggest Manchurian city, so we continued towards Kikihar and Nanjiang. With those cities liberated, we can try an offensive towards their new capital in Khabarovsk. We have supply problems around the front closest to the city, so instead we will advance from Vladivostok. But just as we advanced, the Japanese naval invaded the city and took control over it. At first it seemed like we would never march into the city again because our troops were far weaker than the Japanese. Yet we managed to capture it because of one stupid decision of the Japanese side to leave the city with no garrisons. We will now wait until the Japanese ask for peace. It is too big of a risk to continue our offensive. Two months later the Japanese surrendered conditionally. They transferred all their Chinese territories to us, including Taiwan and Korea. Our land area is now even bigger than the Qing Imperial Authority. So maybe it's time to invade them and finally become the actual main Chinese nation. But the Qing still have all the other warlords as allies. So we will have to massively expand our military. And sadly retreat in some areas where supply is low, like Hunan. Our new armies are now deployed in Manchuria and we are ready to attack the Qing dynasty. We will be attacking both from Manchuria and our mainland. And so it started. We launched our attacks all over the front. Our most important offensive goal was to capture Beijing. The Qing army who didn't think we would attack quickly fell under our army and we managed to capture the city. The Qing retreated their capital to Qian, a heavily fortified city defended by the Zonggan Mountains. If we want to win this war, we have to advance towards the city. But first, we encircled and captured the port of Taijin. And that's when we noticed the German East Asia had sold its states in China to the Qing dynasty. Luckily, they didn't have any divisions there, so we simply captured the two cities. We are now ready to assault Qingyan. It all went really slow because of the mountains. We only advanced because of the surprise element and our superior artillery. Soon we arrived outside the city. We tried multiple times to capture it, but the Qing kept reinforcing in the right moments. But this couldn't go on forever and one day they ran out of reinforcements. We have captured their second capital, their army has lost all morale and their generals have begun mass surrendering. We have defeated the Qing dynasty. Now we only have to turn south and destroy the Qing warlord allies. We will send our northern armies to help destroy them, but we have to hurry. The warlords have begun attacking us in the south. But as they didn't expect the Qing surrender, we could march into northern Chongqing almost uncontested. Or that's what we thought, because soon a coalition of warlord armies showed up. At least we managed to capture Chengdu. Our northern offensive has stalled, so it's time to try one in the south. And even though they have four divisions on the tile, we managed to kick them back. After that, we continued towards the sea, encircling the port city of Shantou. With the city captured, we can continue towards the Lingguang capital and Hong Kong. It wasn't difficult to break through their defenses. We even managed to encircle some of them. After only a few days we had arrived in both Hong Kong and Guangzhou. Sadly we weren't fast enough and their leaders managed to flee to the city of Nanning. They will only surrender once we capture it. 
We managed to cross the river and continue towards the city. Our army constantly attacked their garrison so they couldn't relocate. This allowed us to slip past and capture the city. After that they surrendered and most of their military too. This means the northern front is much weaker and even has a few gaps. We will utilize this to at last capitulate the Chongqing warlord state. After a short battle we had captured their capital and they surrendered. Now there is only one nation left and they have almost no units at home. So we simply marched in and captured all their important cities. We have won the war, we are now the only Chinese nation left. It is time to core everything. But we won't be able to turn the Chinese population over as easily as we want. So we will force Puyi, the Qing Emperor, to subjugate to our side and he will become our Emperor. But the Qing Dynasty has failed China. So Zhang Tianran and his followers have declared a new empire, the Tian Empire. And they have the heavenly mandate on their side. It is time to reform China. But first we have to establish full control over the country. We crushed selfish autocrats, returned authority to the center and entrenched our faith. To be able to finish establishing control we first had to initiate legal reforms. This allowed us to establish total control over the future of China. But even though we have control over our country, people, especially peasants, are unhappy. And the best way to make people happier is through economical prosperity and faith. So we secured railroads from bandits and old enemy divisions that had managed to hide away. To establish even more control and economic prosperity we have begun investing in better infrastructure all over China. Our country is becoming richer and richer but the poor are still as poor as before. We will end landlordism and enact a land reform that will ensure everyone's prosperity. We are now ready for mass industrialization. Our industry is booming but we still haven't unified all of China. We still have to invade Mongolia, Tibet and Xinjiang. So it's time to destroy the pan-Buddhist National Liberation Front. We began with attacking Tibet. They had a strong mountainous defense but one of their generals defected to our side and let us pass through. This made it possible to encircle the city of Shamdu and later capture it. After this disastrous defeat of the Tibetan side we could easily march into Lasha and Shigatse. With their holy sites captured and military defeated they surrendered. We are now ready to attack the Mongolians. They have low supply almost everywhere on their front so our superior army could easily break through. Soon we had arrived in Ugra, their capital. We had even managed to encircle a big part of their army. And we easily destroyed them. The Mongolians are the most determined enemy we have faced so far. We need to capture exactly everything to make them surrender. But supply in the western region is horrible. So before we can push further west we have to build up supply hubs. This took around two months. While we built them we had managed to enter Xinjiang from Tibet. With supply back we can enter Xinjiang from the east too. We pushed through the Mongolian cavalry and quickly captured Dihuan and Turpan. This lightning offensive was so fast the Mongolian army in lower Xinjiang didn't have time to retreat and they now find themselves encircled. Even though they are determined it doesn't help against superior strategy, firepower and supply. It is time for one last offensive to reach Tuva and Minusinsk. It took some time mostly because of low supply and not because of their resistance. But soon we had captured every single one of their states and they surrendered. Finally we have triumphed. Heaven smiles on the empire of China once more as our people live in peace. The emperor rules as the master of the east as he always should have. Our victory will be remembered for thousands of years. 
Thanks so much for watching to the end of my longest video yet. See you in the next one.